determine the optical elements. So this example is um, we would know um, n is equal to zero. Okay, n equal to zero. That means the wait for the slides to come up. So for this case, for this example, the n does not exist. So n does not e exist, that means this uh, intersection doesn't exist. So that means at least we have no reference for us to major omega and to measure everything from here. We have no, um, no way to measure omega. Okay, so here we see how can we do about this one. Uh, here we are given um, is r equal to two zero zero, and in the IJK coordinate systems, and b equal to zero one zero, and in IJK. Okay, so basically here the IJK is the geocentric uh, coordinate systems. Okay, so from here we follow up the procedures here. We first one we determine. Uh, so this one determine. So again, the first one we calculate. We determine the angular momentum. So which means we just determine this uh, axis. So H, uh, based upon here, is R cross V. And that's what we can do this quickly is 0, 0, 2, and DU squared DU. And then the follow-up, our uh, procedures, because from here, from this graph, you know we have, um, right now we have a K axis. We determine, we just calculated H axis. And n axis is binormal to the both, so we can determine n. So n equal to binormal, that is, uh, say, k uh, cross h, okay? So for this case, basically, it's 0, 0, 0, nothing. Okay, that means n does not exist. Okay, so under that situation, um, there's a no blind of no. Okay, so for this case, um, there's a no end. So basically, um, yeah, just has no end there. So for this one, we uh, later on once we determine these appropriate um, the certain elements that we need to use other reference uh, lines. Okay, so now from here we can begin to first calculate um, e eccentricity. That one is one over mu, and we put into here v cross h minus mu over r r. Okay, so to determine E, we have everything in place. So this one is equal to one, zero, zero. And so therefore, our first element, E, the eccentricity, equal to one. So basically this is as, um, equal to one is um, parabolic, uh, equal to one is parabolic, right? <clears throat> then P, the magnitude of P is H squared divided by mu. So here we have H squared. Uh, so from here the H equal to the magnitude of this equal to 2. So here it is 2 squared divided by 1 equal to 4. And that one is um, DU. 
Okay. So now the third one we determine I. I is this angle. I is the angle between H and K. So we see. So using this page, um, we simply, uh, I is the angle between the two vectors, so, so we simply take the inner product of the two vectors. So therefore, I equal to, um, is zero degrees, that means the H is pointing to the K direction, so that apparently we can see that one here. Then we determine the fourth one. The fourth one is in capital omega. So now we're going to determine this one. Okay. And here already we know the line of node doesn't exist. So omega not defined. Because uh, the n does not exist. Okay. So since we lack one component, we will see what happens. <coughs> Then for the fifth one, we want to determine omega. And again, omega is determined the angle from n to e, but again, the n doesn't exist. So omega is not well defined as well, so the, for the same reasons. So this one, I, I put a check here that the one doesn't exist. So we need to use the other two uh, elements uh, to, um, to fill in this, this kind of the undefined properties. Okay? You simply look at this one here. Because of the end, this one doesn't exist. So basically this angle, this angle, we have no way to, to do it. Um, For, for the meaning of the omega, the lowercase omega, if you look at this graph, and um, so pretty much you can stop for a few seconds and look up here and just grab a quick concept. So here, because the omega is the certain angle to identify the relative positions of the perigee axis, and this one does not exist. So here we determine this one in respect to whatever we know. So for this particular case, we determine the relative position of the perigee axis respect to I. Okay? And of course, you say, can I use the negative J axis as my reference, as my datum to measure that angle? Yes, of course you can. But the most, uh, the most common exercise is that people pick I as the another reference if this become a, unavailable. Okay, so the remaining calculation should be very straightforward. So for this case, since the end does not exist, so we, in, rather than we calculate it using, um, we, um, we calculate, we find, we calculate I. Okay, so again, the pi, again, you look at this one, that is the angle between the E vectors and I vectors. Okay, so that means here cosine pi equal to E vectors dot I vectors and E I. And E vectors dot I vectors is that one equal to one. And this is one. So therefore pi equal to zero degrees. Okay. The concept, graph the concept calculation should be very straightforward. And 
now again, uh, we want to determine uh, the last one. We want to determine the rotations. So here we want to determine the true anomaly. Okay, so let me go to the next page. So true anomaly, look at here. The true anomaly is based upon the, uh, the angle that is between the R vectors and E vectors. Okay, so here it's pretty good uh, to read the diagrams. So again, the true anomaly is the angle between the E vector and R vectors. So from here, the both of the vectors exist. So here we determine cosine nu zero. equal to two vectors E dot R. Okay, so this one equal to two divided by two equal to one. So again, the new equal to zero degrees. Okay, so that pretty much will give us um, these things here. So right now we have, for this case, we only have uh, five elements because here the omega is not defined. So basically we have no line of nodes. So for that case, uh, the intersection, basically that is an equatorial plane and there's a no um, ascending nodes, no descending nodes. Basically the, if this is an equatorial plane, the the satellite basically is going in these directions. Okay. Um, the last one, if you wish, you can try to calculate L0. So this is the additional supplementary uh, the parameters. For this case, if you like, the L0 can be done like this. L0 is the angle between I. L0 is the angle between two vectors, the I vectors and two R vectors. So the L0 can be calculated by cosine L0 equal to the two vectors I axis and R vectors. Okay, so for this case, this is again two over two. So therefore L0 equal to zero degrees. Okay. So this is the example for this. So 